You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is not and, as uh, simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many you know, more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the It's Always Draft Season Podcast, part of the Packer Podcast Network. Jake Shrink here with you guys. Live, really, from Mobile, as uh, the practices have concluded this week. It was a lot of fun getting out there. It was uh, really the first successful year for the outside practices uh, and who knows how long. Um, the draft world uh, descended on Hancock Whitney Stadium in Mobile, and I would say 70% of them got sunburned uh, on the first day. 75 and sunny, not what we're used to down here. But awesome time, as always, and there's a lot to talk about from the practices, and I know for those that aren't, you know, onto the draft all the time and are kind of just wait for draft day or the combine, Senior Bowl gets you an up-and-close look at a lot of top seniors, uh, why practices over the game, there's just a lot more reps to be had in practice. And that, that it's not to say the game doesn't matter. It absolutely does. But I think in practice, you get a you get a real good look at, you know, how much you guys are willing to work for every rep, every opportunity. Um, that all culminates during during the game. But you see a lot more of, again, just reps. And you can see a lot more of what their skill set is as a whole because you get a lot of one-on-one reps guys can get into their repertoire as pass rushers you can see offensive linemen vary up the hand usage vary up their sets you know there's just so much you can look at you know when you have you know 40 reps 45 reps of, of a certain drill all throughout the week so that's really nice and there are even some team stuff now they don't hit fully but you still see offensive and defensive linemen battling in the trenches so it gives you a nice kind of all encompassing look at the week. So let's talk about a few, maybe a bit more than a few guys though, who really impressed throughout the week. And I think there's only one place to start and that's with Ohio state offensive tackle. Dewan Jones uh, comes in at six, eight, three seventy five uh, sets the record for the, the longest wingspan at 89 and a half inches of anyone who's been at the senior bowl. So he wins the weigh in, right? He wins all, all these size measurables now. Like, okay, this is a really, really big guy to tackle. And what else do we see from that? Well, we saw him just eviscerate folks first day of practices. You know, that they get these one on ones where, you know, we talk about really the pass rush reps where offensive linemen are setting and, and you know, they got to read and react and, and really answer the call for about four or five seconds. Uh, defending a coach as the quarterback. Uh, but they also get to get after it and, and you know, get upfield a little bit as, as run blockers. And that's what Jones did. Really just took two guys out of the play um, and back-to-back reps, you know, put an put an, uh, Oregon linebacker, 6'4", 260, DJ Johnson into the ground pretty quickly, uh, snatched Isaiah Foskey in a one-on-one pass rushing um, drill. And pretty much called it a week, like three highlight plays. You know, nobody could move him. 
you know, it's, it's hard with his size and his length to really get him moving any direction. And he was just, again, he answered the bell in everything they asked of him on day one and, and decided that was it. No more practice, no more game. Don't want to get hurt. Maybe thought, okay, this is my, my move into the first round. That's, you know, let's be honest. Is not really full of tackles at this point? There, there are top three for sure in Skaronsky Jones and uh, Paris Johnson, Anton Harrison from Oklahoma is in the mix, but Dewan Jones might've put him in that conversation. And that's kind of why we haven't seen him the rest of the week. Again, that could be what the NFL thinks, or, you know, maybe his agents telling him that, but either way, I think you're looking at, at a top 50 guy right now. So again, the size length, the physicality, you know, just absorbing, you know, explosive, powerful rushers, just absorbing them. No problem. That is, that's a big deal. Um, for teams looking at right tackle, again, can't assume he's able to flip to left. We haven't seen him enough there yet. Maybe he can, but for now, again, right tackle matters at least 90% as much as, as left tackle does. So that value is there. He has played himself into that position. Um, again, I think the offensive line, like like Mason and I talked about uh, last week to preview the Senior Bowl, was this was the group that, I think a lot of us were paying attention to, and and it's for good reason. And I think we really saw it this week with um, Minnesota center John Michael Schmitz, who I, I don't know why isn't getting as much as much love. I know he's I think a sixth year senior now, so I get that. I understand. Like, okay, that's you know not the best, but like we need to talk about this guy a lot more, just because right now at like six four three seventeen. He has enough of the frame to handle, you know, rushers, guys rushing him head on and be able to anchor and, and be able to hold his ground. But he's also got the extremely athletic movement skills that you see out of, you know, the best zone centers in, in, in the NFL. Right. We talked about a lot about Tyler Linderbaum last year being this, you know, second level assassin as a run blocker. You know, they let him get out in space. He, he gets there so easily. He's such a explosive linear mover but we see that with john michael schmitz as well and you know he's zone blocking he's reach blocking second level space you know getting out to the perimeter he could do it all right he's got that athleticism we've talked about him being a finisher you know as well but really what he did this week absorbing you know 300 310 pound defensive tackles in one-on-ones no help like for him to just, just sink his hips drop his weight and drop anchor, not letting guys stay locked out, keep those hands in tight, you know, resetting his hands when he needs to, to keep leverage. He did it all this week. And honestly, like he, Dewan Jones even included here, he, Schmitz might've been the best player in Mobile all week. And it was, it was pretty easy to tell why. Now I want to stay in the offensive line again here. Talk about Osiris Torrance, the guard from Florida who is probably the top guard in the draft. I know there's some people like Andrew Voorhees from USC. That's fine. Torrance, I think, is better, and you, and you see him, just the amount of power, right, the functional strength in his legs and his core and his hands, you know, staying inside tight, just not giving up much ground. Like Byron Young gave him the best competition that anyone could really all week outside of another guy we might talk about. But him against Byron Young was a heavyweight fight, and, and he really – did a great job, you know, handling the long arm, handling, you know, all the counters that it was being thrown at him, right? He did a great job. So I think when you look at Schmitz, Torrance, and, and Dewan Jones, three offensive linemen who should go in the top 50, basically at this point. And, and Senior Bowl doesn't really a stock make per se, but I think it, it really brings attention to them that they've probably had in scouting circles already. And I think that's that's what's important. I think Dewan Jones was already, you know, in the vein of of top fifty guy who could press for round one. Schmitz was always going to be somebody who's going to go in the second round. You know, I think he played himself a little bit higher. And Torrance has gotten run in the first rounds. You know, we've talked about him to the Broncos, the Giants, the Bills, right? Three teams. Now the Broncos don't have their pick anymore, but it still stands with teams like the Bills who who need some more help on the interior. And you want to take a great player who's available there. That's that's Torrance, right? Um, I'll let a few more. And again, this is a prerequisite. 
for this. I just want to put this out there to, to preface, like I haven't gone through all of the senior bowl film yet. This is just mostly live viewings, what we saw there. So the senior bowl film will be all gone through. It's going to take a while, but all through the next 36 hours or so, 38 hours before the game starts. And then maybe we'll have a show that, that kind of wraps up the entire week as a whole, but we'll see. But starting with those three, I think was, was the way to go. Um, I think where I want to go next, I want to talk about North Dakota state offensive lineman, Cody mock. Um, I think he had an up and down week. I don't think he was on the level that the other three were. Um, certainly, again, played left tackle in college for the Bison. So he didn't get a lot of reps at tackle this week. It was a lot of guard, some center mixed in as well. So just the, you know, the amount of, of work it takes to adjust and move inside is is going to be massive, right? That's It's going to take some time for him. And I think... He had great reps where, again, he's getting his hands in tight. You know, he's he's readjusting when he needs to dropping that dropping that anchor, dropping the weight like it can, can really. Just soften, soften the blow and absorb the blow and, and. You know, keep his quarterback clean, but there are other times where, again, he's out there lunging, you know, he's more athlete than powerful guard at this point, and you can kind of see that, you know, he's getting used to not having as much room to let guys go around the corner, right? Like this is a phone booth, you know, it, it's, it should be easier in there, but again, this is more powerful players on the interior that are pushing him back than he's used to, right? Even if he was playing against better competition on the edge, like he's still, this is still a work in progress for him. So he had an up and down week. I think he's another one of these guys who's a fantastic mover in space where, you know, you get some guys who are more like, you know, got to stay stationary as guards or whatnot. Like he's had obviously the tackle experience so he can get out in space and he's a phenomenal athlete with that. And so zone teams are, are really going to like what he can bring to the table. Power teams are going to like being able to pull him. So he's got a lot of that. It's just building consistency now as he's moving inside to guard, inside to center, wherever an NFL team might play him. So wanted to comment on him. I think... The other two offensive linemen who I think did a really, really good job this week. I think Oklahoma's uh, Wanya Morris was impressive at right tackle. Um, he, to finish the week, they uh, the American team had um, four 1v1s. It was linebacker, running back, corner, and, and a receiver, and then two offensive line, defensive line, 1v1. So they did four of them. I think they want they the coaches gave it two and two. I think if you talk to most people um, in the stands watching and then the analysts, it was three one. But one of those was Wani Morris against Auburn edge rusher Derek Hall. Well, I think we'll talk about it in a little bit, but Hall's been a good player and Morris just shut him down. Great job, you know, stopping him in his tracks. You know, a guy who likes to. Win with his length, win with power, you know, win with that initial explosion to kind of stun you, drive you back a little bit. Morris kept his feet in front, shuffling, you know, took him inside, took him for a ride and won the rep. O-line celebrated. Morris did the gritty, but I think he's done uh, just a really phenomenal job. Again, moving quickly with his feet, you know, being able to kind of mirror when he needs to, you know, take guys around the edge when they need to. Like he has done a fantastic job. and. His teammate, like we said, is probably going to be first round pick. I think Morris has played himself into day two range. I think he's that good of a player at tackle. I think it's a tackle class that's that's looking for more guys to jump up like that. And I'd say that I think that Morris did a phenomenal job. And I think Matthew Bergeron uh, from Syracuse did very well as well. Uh, you know, they moved him inside a little bit at guards sometimes during the week. His best film is at tackle, I think, and I think his best reps were at tackle. I think you see him be able to move. He, you know, he his vertical sets are good. Like I think he's just better suited to play out there. I know they they like to move guys around. They like to see, okay, can you handle this? Can you handle that? Which is another reason why the practices are so fun. You know, when you're not tuning into the game later in the week and you're like, why is this guy who plays tackle playing guard? Right? 
well, they moved him around during the week. And that's that's something you that's important to take note of, you know, when you're down in Mobile. So, yeah, I think Bergeron did well at tackle. Um, it's a lot of American guys, a lot of American team guys at, on the offensive line. I think you're going to see a great group uh, out there. So um, let's shift gears a little bit from offensive line. Let's talk running back Ty J Spears, who's definitely got a lot of hype uh, throughout the week. Again, it's hard for running backs to get hype because most of the time, you know, when you're in 11s, when you're in seven on seven, you know, they're not allowed to hit you. So you're not really truly making guys miss per se. Um, but I think Spears, what he did do is show off the explosion, show off the speed, show off the lateral quicks that he has. You know, he can make people miss. And the rep everybody's talking about with Spears certainly is the rep he had against um, Servosia Dennis at the end of really, I guess not the end, but in the middle, right in the middle of day three's American practice. You know, he he did a nice job. Um, he's running the flat, you know, flats covered and he shows the ability to just dip under a guy and he left him in the dust. And that was a really good job by him. I think that's a play where, you know, it, it got all the oohs and ahs, you know, which is great and, and stuff. And it was a fun play for sure. Like seeing someone be that creative. Awesome. You're not going to have four or five seconds to make that happen usually, you know, so that, that's where it's, you know, you have to kind of be like, okay. This probably isn't something that's going to happen in the game now. However, he can dip under contact as a runner. He did that in the bowl game against USC. So I think that's translatable. You have to look at that trait and say that's translatable rather than be like, oh, what he did on this play as a whole is is translatable, right? You're not going to see that play very much, but you're going to see that type of play more so in space, more so when he's working to the perimeter or, or between the tackles, right? So that ability to dip and get under guys is impressive. Um, let's talk about the defensive line, because I think there, there are some guys worth talking about. Um, I think we should start with Iowa State edge rusher Will McDonald, who I thought, you know, brought the explosiveness, the twitch, you know, the ability to dip, win with speed around the arc, high side rush, like he can do that. Wicked inside move, wicked inside spin. Like he was just putting out teach tape day in and day out. He beat Darnell Wright a bunch in the one on ones. Someone who I think a lot of people coming in, including myself, thought, you know, another tackle who could be fringe first round at this point. He 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 worked them all week long. Uh so it was impressive to see a guy move so fluidly, you know, be able to be explosive and just have an answer for a lot of guys. And I think he he thought so coming in that he was going to be a pass rusher who had all the answers. He studied. He's like, I studied these guys. I know how to beat these guys. Like, that's the type of mentality you want. Now, he is somebody who's not going to be, you know, this, you know, strong side defensive end, like, you know, be able to sit and leverage in the run game. No, he's going to get blown off the ball there. But when you need a guy to come in, you know, kind of like the, what the Bengals do with Joseph Osai, you know, who's a rusher can win on the inside, can win outside. Like you're, it's your job to get after the quarterback in this situation. That's what will McDonald is going to be from Iowa state. And I think, you know, DJ put him in a first round in a mock draft. I don't think he's going to go that high, but like for a team that needs a pass rush specialist and, you know, you believe in that type of defense where you get guys behind the sticks and you can get after him, like will McDonald's going to do that for you. Um, so Keanu Benton from Wisconsin defensive tackle, probably going to be a lot of three technique. He just gets driven off the ball a lot uh, as a defensive tackle. I don't think you're going to see a lot of zero one tech. He's not going to be a nose guy, but like he's, he's talented enough. I think, you know, how explosive and quick he is off the ball, out of his stance, just insane moving linear, linearly like that with that type of explosiveness. But again, he's got a really nice club move. He's got a good swim move, a good rip move. Like he can get up the field and he's disruptive. And that's important. Now he he kind of got cocky a little bit. He put the spin move out there on day three was not very good. Um, but I think he is, again, a good interior pass rusher who's going to be, you know, if you want him to, you're not going to ask him to two gap. I don't think a lot. You're going to ask him to, you know, slant disrupt get in the gap and get upfield and that's you know for certain defenses that's he, he's going to provide that for you northwestern 
Ade Adebaware. Wow. What a day. What a week. He's not going to, it's not going to be fancy all the time with him, right? He's going to be able to sit and leverage in the gaps. He's six one. And I think three fourteen. like he's smaller in stature, thick build has that, that height that, you know, he's going to be lower. He'll get the, he'll get his hands into you out, leverage you. You know, I think he's really technically sound as a player. So what he did this week was, and he talked about this. He goes, you know, if you're going to, if you're somebody who's jump setting as a guard a little bit outside and I see that lane, I'm taking it. Right. So that's, that shows you the impressive vision he has, how quick he can react, the hand eye, right? Like quick cognitive processing to get into what he can get into to win. And had two reps today against Jarrett Patterson, the uh, offensive lineman from Notre Dame, and lit him up twice, drove him back double digit yards each time. Not even joking. This is not hyperbole. Drove him back 10 plus yards both times. That stuff's going to translate when you're one on one. He drove him back so far, almost into the into the goalpost pylon, like the goalpost pad that, that Patterson was pretty upset. Uh, the defensive line was loving it. So Adeba Ware is going to be a really strong three tech who is, again, another guy who's disruptive, but can play with great levers. He's, he's got pretty long arms for his size as well. So those long levers and, and the ability to leverage is going to be huge for him. So he did a phenomenal job this week. Um, Isaiah Foskey, again, very good week. Is he probably going to be a round two player? It's, it feels like that at this point. But the Notre Dame edge rusher, um, great size, great length for the position. We've seen him sit and leverage gaps in the run game. He does a great job setting a strong edge. I think this week for him, you know, showed a little speed to power, ran over Ryan Hayes once, uh, the tackle from Michigan. So a great job in that facet. Um, but he's got a really good cross shot move and he's patient getting into it if he needs to. You know, he's not, he doesn't have that urgency to need to win initially, right? He, he can play with some patience on the edge, but still be, you know, energetically patient and, and ready to strike when that opportunity comes, you know, one and a half seconds into the, into the rush where he can get to the cross chop. He can rip underneath and get to the quarterback. You know, he's got that, he's got that go-to move that he likes to do, but when he's got those long levers, you know, he's able to just, he's able to chop Lyman's arms down and, and create some leverage around the high side can win inside. He's a phenomenal athlete. Like this is the type of build that, you know, on this podcast, Packers fans, I think you should get to know him in the second round. So Derek Hall, I think, did a great job this week. He is so they're they're working on setting edges in the run game. And I think, you know, Derek Hall does a great job showing you what that should be and what that should look like. You know, he's he's holding his ground, anchoring down in the run game. He sits, he locks out his inner arm. And he sits and he waits and, and he's able to get off the block when he needs to. And he did that, you know, multiple times in 11 on 11. But again, in that drill where they're specifically telling you, okay, lock out, hold your ground. Like Derek Hall is teach tape for how to do that. And I don't know why the coach, the coaches didn't seem like they were pointing to him as like the example, but they probably should have been all week. Like a lot of the guys just get a little bit washed out on, on plays like that. Um, Unfortunately, like a guy like Andre Carter, who's more in the mold of Will McDonald, as you know, this is going to be a rush end rather than a, a true defensive end who's going to be able to hold up in the run. Like there are guys that need to work on that. So I think Derek Hall was great in that facet. Um, as far as we'll move off the trenches now, but I want to talk about a couple of receivers. Um, let's take a quick break here and then. We will get back to um, the skill positions. We'll talk quarterbacks and we'll talk, you know, the back seven. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news. So don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, 
This is the deal. Each week, you'll hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and, not as uh, simple you know, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many you know, more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Okay, back here, guys, uh, with It's Always Draft Season. Um, I want to highlight some tight ends. I know Daniel Jeremiah put Davis Allen, uh, the Clemson guy, in his top 50. Very interesting to see that name up there. I think he's pretty strong inline blocker. Um, excuse the squeak, but you know, I think he, he's a pretty solid all-around player. I don't think he's going to wow you with any athletic traits per se, but I think he had a solid week, showed out you know, reliable hands, pretty solid routes, but I think just overall, I think he's well-rounded, not a high ceiling guy, but a pretty high floor player. Um, Payne Durham from Purdue. Um, I think he did his best work as a blocker. They gave him some H back looks, but I think he does a great job on the edge against some of the top defensive ends. I think that's really where he made his money this week was as a blocker. That's good. He's got good size for the position, maybe a little bit taller, of a uh, of a tight end, so not always the easiest to be a good blocker when you're taller than everybody. Um, really makes you again work on technique, getting low. You know, a lot of knee bend, no waist bend, and so I think he did a great job though uh, in that facet. But really, the headliner is Luke Musgrave from Oregon State, who only played in two games, only caught 11 passes for 169 and a touchdown in those games this year. So I had surgery. Um, and was was ready to go full bore this week, and it showed. Uh, I don't know what the day three numbers looked like in terms of speed, but Zebra Technologies is tracking all the speed stuff for these guys, and it's interesting to see. I know both Foskey and Derek Hall, to just kind of backtrack for a second, both went over 18 miles per hour. Um, that was impressive stuff. I think... Uh, before we get back to Musgrave, it was just crossing my mind. Like I said, I want to go off the rip and just kind of no notes, just kind of like go off remembering what I saw. Um, Yaya Diaby from Louisville and Keon White from Georgia Tech. Keon White from Georgia Tech is DJ's eighth overall player right now on his big board. Both were disruptive, powerful, explosive uh, defensive linemen who kind of moved all over the line. So just two guys, I think, to watch there. So Diaby, Louisville. White and Georgia Tech. So two strong players there. But back to Musgrave crossing uh over 20 miles per hour um with speed this week. And that was impressive to watch. Again, he's a long strider, long legs, big catch radius guy, made some plays in, in sevens and elevens with, with that catch radius. You know, he expands the target zone for quarterbacks. He's probably going to run really well at the combine. So, like he came in and did what he needed to do this week for sure. Show that you're fast, show that you're big, right? Big, strong, you know, make tough catches like acrobatic, you know, playmaker at the catch point. He is that. So I think that's another player for Packers fans to really get acquainted with. And, and we'll be talking about the tight ends in depth soon on the podcast. So don't, don't, you know, you don't have to wait too long. Um, I think Cam Blatu from Bama was fine. I think he was had a, had a solid week, uh, but clearly Musgrave was kind of a, a tier above everybody just from a size speed standpoint. Um, 
like I said, running backs, we talked about Spears. I thought Eric Gray did pretty well this week. Again, a smooth runner, good lateral displacement and quicks. Uh, again, another reliable hand guy as well as a receiver. Um, Roshan Johnson from Texas broke his hand the first day of practice in pass pro drills. He was easily the best pass protector there. And again, a guy who's in that AJ Dillon build of like a hammer, basically, who can, you know, survive two or three guys and still be churning through contact. So a really good player who I think is a top 100 guy when all is said and done, just with the size he has and the ability to force missed tackles and carry defenders uh, post contact. Um, that that's going to matter in the NFL for sure. Um, so I want to do, let's do receiver. Um, obviously if you, you follow the podcast a long time, you know, that's bread and butter for me. Love it. Um, let's talk about tank Dell from Houston and Jaden Reed from Michigan state Two players who, you know, are the smaller twitchier, more explosive players. They're going to win these, these drills, right? They're going to win these a lot. That's just how it goes. Like it's hard to cover guys, you know, when they have all the time in the world to win the rep and they have the entire field, there's no other defenders out there. There's no other guys to collide into like they're going to win those. So I I'm not as impressed with their weeks. Just a reminder, Andy Isabella was always open at the comp at, at the senior bowl a few years ago. He was a smaller, faster guy who was tough to cover. Right. That's not how the NFL defense is going to be structured. And it's not just one on one with a quarterback sitting there for you know 14 seconds. It's just not how it is. But I will say two players who I think caught my eye the most this week were Stanford's Michael Wilson and Virginia's Dontavian Wicks. So Michael Wilson has missed 17 games in the last three years with Stanford. So injuries have kind of made him miss quite a bit of time. I think he was spectacular down here and he isn't really the fastest guy, although he did put up a good speed time this week. I think it was over 18 miles an hour. Like that's good. You know, he's got some good closing speed. He's got that finishing speed to kind of stack defenders and win down the field if he needs to really reliable hands, uh, you know, caught everything his way this week, you know, made some play through contact, right? Good body control on the sideline, all that great stuff. But I think what really separates Wilson is how crispy is as a route runner and how efficient, but also explosive his releases can be. And when you're getting into, you know, the split releases, you get into a little diamond or you're, you're hopping into your split or, you know, you're doing one or two step, you know, quick or quick jab releases like the ability to be explosive and and get up field or get wide and get up field like as wide as he can get as explosive as he is out of his out of these cuts out of this release package he has, you know, to generate some early and significant separation against DBs, right? This is happening within a second, a second and a half, two seconds where that's where you got to show me that you can do it, right? You're, you're not messing around. You're not getting super crazy with your footwork, but you're doing a great job separating. And I think Wilson showed that in the one V ones that he could get open quickly because of how quickly he can pl- get his feet set and how quickly he can plant in the ground, and how explosive he is off that plant foot. Really impressive stuff from him. I, I am excited to see all the film on him. Um, so Dontavian Wicks is more twitchy, explosive guy, but I thought his releases were good. I thought he played well through contact. He's had he had drop issues this year um, at, at Virginia, but I thought he was pretty sure handed all week. And again, when you can make those tough catches over the shoulder, you can track the ball. Well, he did a good job with that all week. I, I think those are probably the two more impressive receivers this week that weren't the small guys always getting open. Um, I'm trying to think of the, if there's anyone left that that I'm missing there. I don't think there is. Um like I said, I, th- I thought those two were the most impressive to me. Uh, let's go then. I, I just want to touch on the quarterbacks really quick. Obviously, you know, not a great crop. Still think Will Levis should have been down here. I talked with some of the guys, some of the guys I know today about this, but like it, it just feels like he should have been here. Uh, same with Sets and Bennett. So uh, the quarterbacks didn't impress me that much. I think they were, you know, accuracy issues, touch issues. Nobody could really lay your throws. Uh, some guys are missing the accuracy net over and over. Like I said, most a lot of guys just late through their reads. So 
you know, they're getting pressured and they would be sacked in a lot of the drills. So that's it's it's tough. I, I just think that they're all kind of a step slow. Now, the guy who I think had the best week of everybody, um, I think when you look at team drills and like layering throws, some well-placed balls, I think it was Jake Hayner from Fresno State. And I wouldn't have said that after after day one, but I think his second and third days were impressive when you're getting into the full team stuff. You know, he made the highlight throw in the in in that uh, in the 11s in the red zone today to Payne Durham. A great throw to the corner needed to be on on the money, and it was. You know, he's layering throws over. You know, dropping corners and, and safeties working at the sideline. So there was a lot of that. Um, he did drop a lot of snaps this week, uh, whether it be under center or in shotgun. I think. You know, we were counting all week. I think it was at least eight or nine snaps were dropping. So that that's not a good sign but he threw the ball pretty well. Now the shepherd quarterback Tyson Bajan, I think also did pretty well, you know, generating some velocity on his throws, but I thought he was genuinely accurate. He is, the game is, is a little bit faster for him right now. So he's got to get to reads a little bit better. You know, he's got to recognize where we're going. There was a lot of six on seven this week, you know, where you have your, your skill guys running routes against seven defenders, but you got to be able to know when holes are going to open up, be anticipatory with your throws. Not a lot of quarterbacks did that, Bajan was among those guys who I think just struggled at, at, at learning where to be anticipatory, getting to the read you need to in the progression and making the throw confidently. Um, I, I still think he did solid this week, though. I think he, he looked confident out there. You know, he might get a shot. Um, where else do we want to go? I think we've covered a lot of the offense, pretty much all of it. Let's go to linebacker really quick. I think Washington State's Dion Henley had the best overall week. TCU linebacker D Winters had a couple of really impressive uh, plays in 77, you know, a pick forced fumble. So I thought he did a good job. Uh, that was, that was yesterday. That was Wednesday. Um, but I think Dion Henley was probably the most impressive, just, you know, being able to move laterally in coverage, be able to recover with some speed, you know, disrupted the catch point against running backs against tight ends. So I thought he did a good job overall. Um, it's, it's hard to, you know, get a grasp of how well the linebackers are seeing stuff in front of them without the full senior bowl tape. But I think Diane Henley probably had the best week really liked what I saw from Aubrey Miller jr. Out of Jackson state. I thought he played hard fast. You know, he, he was willing to stick his, his nose in there on some plays. So I thought he, you know, feels like somebody who's going to stick on a team because I think he's just giving all out. He'll do special teams if he needs to. So that's, Really exciting uh, for a guy to Jackson State to kind of make the league and hopefully, you know, stick on a team, whether if it be on special teams. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, Dorian Williams is fast from Tulane. That's all I got to say there. I think he's just working on the consistency, but I think he was fast out there. You know, he, he's moving differently than most of the guys at linebacker. Um, let's get to some corners and safeties really quick as well, just to kind of wrap things up. Um I would say the best corner down there this week was Julius Brents from Kansas state. That's not too, too shocking. I think we highlighted him the most in our preview um, as big and as long as he is, you know, squeezing guys to the sideline, making throws tough at the catch point, you know, being disruptive, you know, being physical early in the route. Like we knew that was coming. He is way more fluid than I thought, you know, they're going through the, the, some of the drills you'll see at the combine where, you know, you, you're flipping your hips or, you know, you're transitioning downhill. You got to transition, flip, turn, run, right? Like a little bit of the square drill, like, you know, just being him being that fluid surprised me in the best way. And I think he did a really good job in coverage. Again, they highlighted 1v1s today. They had four of them for the American team. He did a great job sticking with his guy vertically and, and, and making the PBU happen at the catch point. So a, a good job from him. I would say Darius Rush from South Carolina was probably the next best guy out there. Um, again, when you're when you're at a disadvantage as a corner, trying to stick with the receivers for four or five seconds, it's very difficult. He had a couple PBUs on Wednesday. He had a couple more today. Uh, patient, physical, long, you know, and, and he can reach and get into windows even when he's kind of in trail technique. So I thought he did a great job. Uh, he was also the fastest guy on day two. I think he crossed 21 miles per hour. So that's another thing with that size. He's got good speed too. So really impressed there. Um, other corners that were impressive. Uh, Jacorian Bennett showed off some speed. 
the Maryland DB uh, stuck with Jaden Reed on a go ball on Wednesday. That's very notable. And I think that's where he got his 20 mile per hour speed that was tracked. So I thought he did well um, at safety. I think Chris Smith and Jamie Robinson were physical in coverage when they needed to be. Um, they look like field generals operating on the back end of team drills. Uh, Sydney Brown from Illinois did fantastic this week. Um, reading the quarterback's eyes, dropping into robber coverage, you know, staying physical, you know, in, in man coverage against tight ends. You know, he he's not at the size advantage. You know, he sees 5'10 and 213, right? So he's, he's big enough, but he's not as tall. But I thought he did a great job transitioning quickly, you know, sticking in the back pocket of tight ends and made some plays at the catch point. I think he can do that. So I, I think he can be a box player. I think he can handle himself in coverage. He's just not going to be the tallest guy. Got to live with that, but I think he can be a good player. Um, yeah, uh, Jay Ward, I think, is really explosive, really twitchy in his movements. You know, ability to flip the hips, turn and run, get back downhill in a hurry. I think he's going to be a good slot player. Um, again, doing this off of memory right now, just didn't really want to like be too in depth and sit here for an hour and a half, but just wanted to go through a few guys. Um, want to circle back really quick. Steve Avila from TCU, great mover, great size. Uh, got some, you know, he played everywhere but left tackle in his collegiate career with TCU. I think he played a, some guard and center this week, but I get, again, another guy who's really powerful at the point of attack, you know, not going to give up a lot of ground, but also a pretty good mover for his size. So, again, the offensive line was really good this week. Um, I'll highlight two specialists at the end here to kind of close this out. I'm sure I missed some guys, so we'll maybe do a full wrap up with some of the guys I missed on Saturday once the game is over. But Chad Ryland, the kicker from Maryland, made several 50 yard field goals. A few of those were into the wind, very consistent in the 40s range. So I think his longest kick was measured at 58 yards that went that went through the uprights this week. Thought he played phenomenally as a kicker. And then um, Bryce Behringer, the punter from Michigan State. Very exceptional week for him as well. He's got a big leg punting. Uh, you can see him be able to spin the ball well, get good hang time on the ball. Yeah, I thought he did it did phenomenally. So the, the national team, I think, has the advantage of punter and kicker. So I think that's really it um, this week. Like I said, there's a... So many guys to cover, but it's really hard to do it in just like 40 or 50 minutes. But I think hopefully you get a good picture of kind of some of the guys who stood out. Maybe why some of the guys who are getting hype didn't completely stand out in my eyes. But I thought it was just, again, a supremely fun week. Can't wait for the game on Saturday. Can't wait to kind of put this this senior bowl week in a bow. So if you're going to you know follow along, um, follow me at Jake NFL Draft. I'll do some stuff at NFL Mocks. Um, doing stuff at Rise and Draft for the draft season as well. So there's a lot that you should see. And again, keep following this podcast starting this month. We're going to be Monday and Friday. So should be a mock draft on Monday for you guys. And then we'll get back to position rankings uh, next Friday. I think we're doing running back. So I'm going to get out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed this pod. Um, I will catch you guys very, very soon. Take it easy.